Welcome to another video in our video series Demystifying 5G brought to you by Roden Schwartz. 5G in R uh, defines a very flexible air interface. Um, the viewers and the audience that follow this channel know this uh, very well. So there's quite some challenges uh, around the different numerologies and uh, configuration possibilities and therefore we would like to um, give you some insights on uh, allocations, on slot formats, and how that all play, uh, plays together. So let's take a look. So, of course, uh, 5G and R supports um, FDD and TDD in a duplex mode. Um, so, what we basically uh, can say, uh, studying the specification, there are no uplink downlink configurations like an LTE that we can rely on for the TDD 2 pex mode. Instead, they are slot formats defined. These slot formats, as you can see here, there's 62 of them. Um, and they basically uh, allow uh, a very flexible configuration on how I utilize uh, the available spectrum in, the, in that case. So, of course, for FTD, we use only slot format 0 for downlink or slot format 1 for uplink. That depends, of course, on the direction. But for TDD, this information has to be provided to the device so that the device knows it's now supposed to transmit or it's now supposed to receive uh, data. And there's multiple ways to do that. One way is through uh, the dedicated signaling connection um, through the RRC layer or by the DCI, the downlink control information uh, format that is transmitted on the control channel, the scheduling information, so to speak, and within the DCI would be a slot format indicator. The slot format indicator basically now points into that particular table that we see here. Like I mentioned, there are uh, up to uh, 62 different formats. Um, I simplified the table here a little bit, but at the end, um, there's a very important uh, statement that we see basically here which is it's, uh, the UE determines the slot format for the slot based on the TDD uplink downlink configuration common. Um, that's basically uh, signaling information being provided towards the device. So the parameters, uh, typical parameters for such a configuration uh, for the different subcarrier spacing um, that can uh, uh, cause a different periodicity and so forth is given here. That's typical values that we can assume. For instance, for these two subcarrier spacing, 60 kilohertz and 120 kilohertz. And for the remainder of this um, video, we would like to focus on the 120 kilohertz case, as this is the uh, subcarrier spacings that's being utilized mainly for the FR2, the millimeter wave frequency range. So what you basically see here is we have a, um, um, a periodicity of uh, 1.25 milliseconds. Somehow it's defined there should be um, about seven downlink slots and uh, two uplink slots. And then somehow there's also uh, a number of downlink symbols with six and uplink symbols with a number of four. So let's use this information that we found and translate this into a signal configuration. So once again, here's my uh, configuration for a subcarrier spacing of 120 Kilohertz, as you can see, the periodicity is defined with 1.25 um, uh, milliseconds. So I can mark that here in the table and then, of course, mark that into my, my graphic. So that translates basically with a slot length 420 kilohertz of uh, 0.125 milliseconds into I need 10 slots to do that. But then, of course, there's also uh, this definition of uh, subframe in uh, 5G and R and the subframe is actually one millisecond. So what we can conclude from this is that the periodicity uh, for the uh, TDD downlink uplink configuration and the subframe um, duration of one millisecond, uh, millisecond is not aligned. So that makes it more challenging to define a signal, to configure a signal, for instance, on a signal generator to test uh, RF component like a power amplifier um, that is supposed to support uh, TDD. So if we go back to our configuration here, you see now, like I said in the definition, there's uh, seven um, downlink slots. So if we count these slots, you see here, it's uh, the seven downlink slots. We have the two uplink slots as well, as you can see here in orange. And that means if we have 10 total, there should be one, as we can call it, special uh, slot, which would be then in between downlink and uplink slots, as you can see here in our, our graphic. So now the question is, of course, 
what is the special slot being configured and as you can imagine that has to do with the other two information that we have in our table the six symbols in downlink and two symbols uh, four symbols in uplink so basically again we have uh, the, the six downlink symbols here within that special slot we have the four uh, uplink uh, that makes it then 10 symbols and as we know from the 5G and R physical air specification a slot is always uh, uh, based on uh, 14 symbols so 6 and 4 is 10 so 4 is left what does that mean basically we have four flexible slots within uh, that particular special slot that allows us to switch from a downlink uh, transmission in terms of a base station to uplink to receive and from a mobile perspective of course from receiving data towards transmission. So as you can see uh, uh, in just this uh, uh, example that we have some configuration to do. So what our goal would be now taking this information what we just learned and translating that into a signal uh, generated by a signal generator and then used to for instance test the power amplifier. So we need to do the configuration on a signal generator and on a spectrum analyzer to carry out these measurements. But this is uh, uh, another topic for another video in our video series Demystifying 5G.